I've got a question from, um, from Alice um, from CISPRESS. Um, she wants to know, and it, it sort of links into sort of like the other national speech-based radio stations. Yeah. Uh, she'd like to know what, what you guys consider to be the holes in Radio 4's offer, particularly the Today programme, um, and how you might have addressed them in your programming. Um, I mean, the first thing I'd say is that this has not been, although sometimes people try and characterise this as sort of pitching our tanks on um, Radio 4's lawn, it really isn't, that's how not, we, don't, we don't see it that way, not least because it would be horribly hubristic to take on an, uh, a network with millions and millions of listeners. We're a startup. I want people to always remember who are working on it. We're a startup. We're a challenger. We need to fight for everything that we can possibly get. Um, the general position, I think, around speech radio is in really robust health. And if you count podcasts also, the idea of audio is really in very robust health. There's a golden age of audio we're living through. Um, and that feels that hasn't hit its ceiling yet. So I think there is room in the marketplace for people who want to get uh, information uh, through the medium of audio. But um, Radio 4, Radio 5 Live, LBC, they all have different um, responsibilities uh, that they have either given themselves or have been given. You know, Radio 4 covers a huge waterfront of things. It covers comedy, it covers drama, it covers gardening, it covers all sorts of stuff. 5 Live does sport, LBC does phone and So we don't have to give ourselves any responsibilities like that whatsoever. We're a blank slate. We can really just pursue stories that we're interested in, always be live, always be responsive to them. But what I think we can offer that Radio 4 maybe doesn't do so much is I'm a huge believer in informality and I think the great revolution of podcasts has led to a, a certain breaking down of formality and my very strong belief in life is if you're clever and you have clever people you don't need to be too formal. People want warmth and they don't want to and you know if you've been around a long time as a station or any form of industry you know this uh, you get given grammar you get given stuff that you have to follow because you followed it 10 years ago and you followed it 20 years ago and you do things at a certain way you have an interview at 8 10 because that's what happened 50 years ago some editor decided 50 years ago that the big political interview is at 8 10 even though most people by 8 10 are at work or heading off to work and maybe moving on to different things um, we don't have any legacy we don't have any baggage we can try and do things because they feel like the right thing to do at the right time and i hope we're going to have people who can sit into the microphone and share their lives. You know, it's very, uh, like I said, I don't want presenters, and I include myself in this, to do 45 seconds down the microphone of, of a polemical argument. But if we're talking about care homes and my mum is in a care home, I want the presenter to talk about that. If we're talking about race and one of our presenters has an experience of racism, I want them to talk about that without fear of anyone saying you can't do that because you can do that. Questions of impartiality are a political argument, which we have to be, you know, we're regulated by Ofcom and we will be um, careful of that. But that's got nothing to do with personal experience. It's got nothing to do with sharing a bit of yourself. And I really fundamentally believe that radio is the medium for sharing bits of yourself and then you'll get stuff shared back with you by your listeners and then when it becomes that community that communal experience that's when it really works so i think we're not shackled by anything and we're not having to be formal and i think that to me is a big advantage for us 